Hello and welcome to the third tutorial in this intermediate unit. Today we will be explaining how to use poses, another great time saver available in Alice. However, it does have a downside, which we will explain later. Poses are in essence just what you think they are, a pose. You set up your Alice object in a specific way and capture that setup as a pose. Think of it as taking a picture of your object, which Alice will save. Set up another pose, capture that, and put those two poses into a method. Alice will fill in the gaps. It will move the various parts of an object from its setup in the first pose to its setup in the second pose, no more having to write hundreds of instructions to get an object to do a walk. Should I have told you that earlier? Well, I could have, but it's important to learn the basics first so that you can fully understand Alice. This is often the case with programming real software. There are a lot of shortcuts available to today's programmers, but a good programmer understands all the small details as well. Too many shortcuts lead to mistakes and bad code. Okay, let's make and capture a pose. Put an object into your world, arrange her body parts into the start position you want. There are a couple ways to do this. Use the Effect Subparts checkbox to move the individual parts. This is a quicker way to do it, but it can be tricky to get right. The other way to do it is to just drag in instructions to move the individual parts like this. Okay, now you have set up your object into its starting pose. Go to the Properties tab and find the Capture Pose button. Make sure that you are viewing the properties of the correct object. Notice that right now, we are looking at the attributes for the woman's leg. We want to be capturing a pose for the whole woman, not just her leg. Click the button and make sure to give your pose a good name. We're going to call ours Start Walk. We now want to create a final pose that she will end up in. Remember, Alice will fill in the gaps between the two poses itself. To save time, we've already created our end pose, so let's capture it and call the pose End Walk. We will turn these poses into a method. You don't have to, you could just use them as regular instructions, but whenever possible, it's nice to put things into methods. Let's call our new method Walk. You can either drag the woman from the object window into the instruction box and choose the set pose method or just drag the pose itself into the instruction box. Put the walk method into my first method and press play to watch what happens. Pretty cool, hey? If you don't like the way it looks, unfortunately you cannot edit the poses. You will just have to make new ones. However, a sneaky way around this is to just run the pose you want to edit and it will end up in that pose. Edit that and then recapture it and give it a new name. Now that the walk method animates our character, we would like for her to move forwards at the same time. So let's drag the move method into the do together box. We added this box so we can make our character move forward at the same time as going through the poses. Okay, click on the my first method tab and let's put our new walk method into a loop and make it do it two times. Let's see those results. Excellent. Our character now has a walk method. There are loads of ways that you can use poses to save time, but there are a few problems or bugs with using poses you should be aware of. If you resize any of your objects, then you may run into problems when using these poses. An even better way to use this method would be to allow you to choose how many times they use the pose or how far they walk with it when you use it. In our next tutorial, we will explain how to improve this method by using parameters, variables, and functions. Thanks for watching.